as the Pledge of Allegiance goes, one nation under God, with liberty and justice for all. But let me make needful corrections to the end of the Pledge of Allegiance. You see, folks, we are one nation under God's judgment. And where is the liberty and justice for little babies as they are being butchered today by the thousands all across America? The Pledge of Allegiance should end with, with liberty and justice for some, but not all, not all. In the coming days here leading up to the 4th of July, we are celebrating our freedom. Freedom of speech, freedom of religion, freedom of expression, freedom to assemble. But you see, we have violently violated the freedoms of a certain people group, and those are the people being butchered here at Planned Parenthood, and the little babies butchered on the sign I'm holding. You may ask, for the thinking people, you may ask, why is the flag being flown upside down? It's because if you look up what it means to fly a flag upside down, it simply means the nation is under duress. The nation is in danger. It's a warning of danger. It shows people that there is great danger. A nation under duress, a nation in great distress. And what is that what is that danger? What is that distress? Simply that we are one nation not under God. We are one nation under God's judgment. Because we have sinned against the holy God. Because every single day in this godless nation we butcher thousands of helpless babies to death and call it reproductive freedom call it health care, call it a human right, call it my body, my choice, when God says, you shall not murder. And what a better place to display an upside down flag as a warning, as a symbol of our, the distress that we're in, that we're in danger with a holy God. What a better place than in front of a place where, where little babies are being butchered. In front of Planned Parenthood, where children are being slaughtered today with the permission of the churches, with the permission of almost every professing Christian in this godless city and in this godless country. It makes me wonder why more people don't fly the, the American flag upside down. I guess they think everything's okay. They think peace, peace, but there is no peace. How can there be peace in a guilty land where we slaughter children? Where we celebrate sodomy in the streets? When the Bible says that sodomy, a man lying with a man is an abomination. When we don't even know what gender we are anymore. Where we teach little children that men can become pregnant. Where we teach our own children, our own sons and daughters that there is no God that human life has no value. We throw the Bible out the window. We make it up as we go. As the Bible says, for there is a way that seems right to a man, but in the end, it leads to death. And this is why the only appropriate way to display the American flag is upside down. Because America is upside down. Right is wrong, wrong is right. We butcher babies and call it a human right. This nation puts Christians in prison for protecting babies, for rescuing babies, for doing what the Bible says to do, to rescue those who are being taken away to death, to hold back those who are staggering to the slaughter. This is a warning to this guilty land soaked in innocent blood. This is a public display. This right here is a public display of our nation's violent violation of God's law. God says you shall not murder. And thousands of times every single day we mass murder 
little human beings made in God's image. What should be the safest place in the world, the safest place in America, we have turned into the most dangerous place in the world. The most dangerous place in America is in the womb of a mother who wants her child dead. And then we have the nerve, we have the audacity to ask God to bless us. In the days leading up to the 4th of July, and on the 4th of July, people will be singing God bless America. Why? You see, we ask God to bless us, to bless America, but then he blesses us with children, and we turn right around, and we take those children down the street to Planned Parenthood and have those blessings butchered. So we ask God to bless America, but we spit in his face when he blesses us with children. As the Bible says in Psalm 127, that children are a gift of the Lord. The fruit of the womb is a reward. Blessed is the man whose quiver is full of arrows of children. Now, what do so many fathers do with their children in this country? Well, you see, we are only three days removed from Father's Day. Father's Day is this Sunday. Today, all across America, and yes, right here in Medford, thousands of deadbeat dads are going to murder their babies because dad doesn't want to be responsible, because dad's a coward. Not everyone, but way, way too many, millions of them. Yes, just three days away. Fathers are murdering their children, and in three days, fathers will be celebrating not Father's Day, but deadbeat dad day as they took the girlfriends or the wives to the local serial killer to have their baby look like this, to have their baby butchered because dad doesn't want to be responsible. We celebrated Mother's Day or Murderer's Day last month, now this month. We're celebrating Father's Day or Father's Day or Dead Be Dad Day. So do not wonder why there is a Christian out here flying the flag upside down. It's because America is in great danger, the greatest danger. If this nation doesn't repent, this nation is done for. In fact, I don't know if America, if there's any life left in this country, if, if America is already done for, it's just only a matter of time before God wipes his guilty, blood-soaked, baby-murdering, sodomite perverted land off the face of the earth. I don't know. But what I do know is while there's still breath in your body and your heart is still beating, you have time to repent. And as the Bible says, today, if you if you hear his voice, don't harden your heart. And you see, that's what the vast majority of people are doing. They're hardening their hearts, they're stiffening their necks. Just like the Israelites of old did in the Old Testament, harden their hearts, stiffen their necks. They didn't want to hear the words of the prophets. Now, yes, this is not an easy message to hear, especially because people in this country and, the, and in the churches are so used to having their ears tickled by ear-tickling man-pleasers. Just as it says in Isaiah chapter 30, people say, speak to us pleasant words, smooth things. Let us not hear about the Holy One of Israel. We just want to hear pleasant things pleasant words, smooth things. We want to hear about peace, even though there is no peace. You see, the Bible says that there is no peace for the wicked. There is no peace for the wicked. As the Bible says, for from the least of them, even to the greatest of them, everyone is greedy for gain. And from the prophet, even to the priest, everyone deals falsely. They have healed the brokenness of my people superficially, saying, peace, peace. But there is no peace. Peace, peace, but there is no peace. Were they ashamed because of the abomination they had done? They were not even ashamed at all. They did not even know how to blush. Therefore, they shall fall among those who fall, the Lord says. Welcome to America. Are we ashamed because of the abomination we have done? 
We are not even ashamed at all. We don't even know how to blush anymore. We just want to cry, peace, peace. Well, the Bible says that there is no peace for the wicked. There is no peace for the wicked. The Bible says there is no rest for the wicked. Oh, the Bible says in Psalm 711, God is angry with the wicked every day. No, the Bible does, the Bible does not say that God loves you or that God loves everyone, loves all. No. The Bible says that God is angry with the wicked every day. And the message of the Bible is simple. Repent or perish. Repent and be saved from this perverse generation. A generation so perverse that look at what we do to little babies every day. Thousands of babies every single day. In a nation where churches dot the landscape, churches everywhere, tens of millions of professing Christians everywhere. In fact, how many professing Christians are driving through this, this intersection right now? How many walking through? And yet, how many of you are totally at peace with this happening to your pre-born neighbors? You see, the, the, the fact is that the vast, vast majority of professing Christians all over America and right here in Oregon, they are totally at peace with babies being butchered every single day by the thousands. They are totally at peace with sodomy, sodomites, homosexuals, lesbians, in the streets, parading their, their filth, their, abomina their abominable practices in the streets. Because that's what the Bible says a homosexuality is. Leviticus 18.22. It's an abomination for a man to lie with a man. A male to lie with a male. It is detestable, the Bible says in, in Leviticus chapter 20, verse 13. But America parades abomination all over America. America celebrates child sacrifice. Just as it says... In the, in the prophet Isaiah chapter 3, they display their sin like Sodom. They do not even conceal it. Woe to them, for they have brought evil on themselves. Woe to America. We have brought evil on ourselves. We display sin like Sodom. We do not even conceal it. Many years ago, the homosexuals came out of the closet and began dancing and parading in the streets. But who went into the closet? The homosexuals came out of the closet and comfortable, cowardly, convenient, cotton candy Christians went into the closet where they still act. What we have in America is a cowardly, comfortable, convenient, cotton candy Christianity that bears no resemblance whatsoever to Christianity found in the Bible and in the book of Acts. You see, Christians do not tolerate the slaughter of children. Christians do not tolerate child sacrifice. Christians do not tolerate sodomy, the abomination of homosexuality, especially being taught to children. So when you see these all these evil things being tolerated, and people saying they're Christians, but they, but they tolerate it. Those aren't Christians. Because as the Bible says, the fear of the Lord is to hate evil. And one of the things that God hates is pride. What a thing to hear. What a, what a fitting time to say such a thing in, during Pride Month. Or halfway through Pride Month, or, or better named Pride Goes Before Destruction Month. As Sister Casey has pointed out, happy pride goes before destruction month. You know what the Bible says about pride? The Bible says that God is opposed to the proud, but gives grace to the humble. The Bible says that pride brings a man low. How low has that pride brought us? It's brought us so low that we slaughter children 
and almost no one bats an eye. We take our Bibles and throw them in the trash can. You see, in this country, we throw the image of God in the garbage. We throw children in the trash. That's what it, this right here, this is what America thinks about God. If you wonder what does America and what do the churches, the guilty churches, think about God, this will answer your question right here. This is America's opinion of God. We take the image of God and we throw the image of God in the garbage. We think God is garbage in America. Most Americans, most churchgoers, they think God is garbage because that's how we treat Him in the womb. And you see, if the Lord Jesus Christ, if, if He were to, to come to this earth to, today like He did 2,000 years ago and be, be conceived in the womb of an unmarried woman, how many churchgoers would tell her to murder her baby? How many churchgoers today encourage mothers to murder their babies because they don't trust God? Because they have a different God, not the God of the Bible. So many churchgoers, they encourage mothers to murder their baby in the very place of the incarnation where the Lord Jesus Christ began his earthly life. A country where we have Bibles everywhere. We probably have as many Bibles as we have birth control pills. Bibles in, ab in abundance, an embarrassment of Bibles in abundance. But you see, in America, men have exchanged the Bible in their hands for a beer bottle. Women have exchanged the Bibles in their hands for birth control pills in their purses. Women have exchanged babies in their arms for birth control pills in their purses. This Sunday, Father's Day, makes you wonder how many mothers will be walking into so-called church services and sitting down with their purses and the pews that are full of birth control pills. The Lord knows. And the vast majority of so-called pastors in America, they have, so, they have no fear of God. They fear a man so they won't speak a word against birth control. They won't speak a word against sexual morality. They're totally fine with babies being murdered in their congregation. But please know that for sure, folks, that in the, in the so-called churches all throughout America, there are murdered babies to be found through the pill, through the pills, surgically, through in vitro fertilization, IVF. So upon hearing all that, that, that is the answer to your question. Why is he flying a flag upside down? I just told you why. Because we are in great danger in America. Just as the Bible says in the Gospel of John chapter 3, the Lord Jesus Christ said, the one who does not believe the Son, the wrath of God abides on him. You see, if you're still in your rebellion against God, then the Bible says that God's wrath abides on you. You're already condemned. We're not condemning anybody out here. We don't have that authority to condemn anybody. The fact is you're already condemned under God's wrath. But you don't have to remain in that in that pitiful state, that condition. That's why we bring you the gospel. As the Bible says in 1 Timothy chapter 1, Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, among whom I am foremost of all. That's good news today, folks, for you. That Jesus Christ can save you if you repent and humble yourself. But again, the Bible says that God is opposed to the proud but gives grace to the humble. As the Bible says in Isaiah 55, Seek the Lord while He may be found. Call upon Him while He is near. Let the wicked forsake His way, and the unrighteous man his thoughts, and let him return to the Lord, and He will have compassion. And to our God, for He will abundantly pardon. Oh, the Bible says, O oh Lord, if you shall mark iniquities, O oh Lord, who could stand? <coughs> but there is forgiveness with you that you may be feared. 
For with the Lord there is loving kindness, and with Him is abundant redemption. Abundant redemption. As the Bible says in Romans 7, Wretched man that I am, who will set me free from the body of this death. Thanks be to God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. You don't see that kind of, of humility and repentance in most so-called churches in America. Now you see people who think they're good, even though they murder their babies, even though they're living in fornication, the homosexual lifestyle, even though they're drunkards, even though they have filthy mouths. How many professing Christians have I encountered recently in, in the last month or so who had filthy mouths, dropping F-bombs and all kind of foul language, even taking God's name in vain, saying GD. And the Bible says that God hates the perverted mouth. Proverbs 8.13 Yes, God hates the perverted mouth. The Bible says if, if any man does not control his tongue, this man's religion is worthless in James 1.26. I've met many professing Christians recently who, who couldn't control their tongue. They saw nothing wrong with cursing, dropping F-bombs, even in front of children. Even in front of children. So yes, this is a warning to this guilty land soaked in innocent blood. A very appropriate time. It's always an appropriate time, but especially three days before Father's Day. And and couple of in just a couple of days, we'll be having there's a festival happening here, Juneteenth, where people will be celebrating the emancipation of black people from slavery, from chattel slavery. But folks, there's another people group in America right now, and, and actually here in the city, that are enslaved, that are being treated like property, tortured and murdered, dehumanized. And it's happening just down the just down the sidewalk. It's happening right now at Planned Parenthood. Just just over here, it's happening. Do most people care? No. Do most be, do most professing Christians care? No. They couldn't care less. You see, every age has its evils. Every age has its abolitionists. And. Every age has its apathetic, couldn't care less people who just go on by, go about their business, and they ignore the injustice that's right in front of their eyeballs. You see, even though these murders happen behind closed doors, out of sight, out of mind, that's why we bring these images to you, into your sight, into your mind, to show you what's happening to the most helpless, defenseless, abandoned, vulnerable, hated, minority, the most innocent of all human beings in this country. And the vast, vast, vast majority of professing Christians could not possibly care less. They justify their inaction, they justify their silence, saying, I'm not called to do that. What they really mean is, uh, what most professing Christians really mean when they say, I'm not called to address that, when babies are being butchered, what they really mean is, I'm not called to love my neighbor as myself, the second great commandment which Jesus said is the fulfillment of the law. So you might as well just say, I'm not called to obey God, as weird as that sounds. Apparently most, 99.9% .9 of professing Christians in America and pastors are not called to obey God. They're not called to love their neighbor as themselves. When their neighbors are being butchered down the street, in this case, not even down the street, it's just down the sidewalk right here. And you're, you have it right before your eyes, we have several images of what's happening to little babies before your eyes today. And major the majority of professing Christians, yes, they will have outrage. Those who are not apathetic, they will show outrage, but not that the murders are happening. No, there are outrage that is being publicly displayed. What a pathetic people we are. What an, absolute, an absolutely pathetic people that we are. If we get upset, over the public display of murdered babies, but then we could not care less that the murders took place in the first place. And that is the condition of most Americans, most churchgoers. I know that because I've been to how many so-called churches in this country, all over America. I've stood outside so many, maybe hundreds of, of so-called churches, showing them what happens to their pre-born neighbors every day for over 51 years, 
and they get more upset that I publicly display the sufferings of our murdered neighbors and they couldn't care less that their murders took place in the first place. That's America. Again, the Pledge of Allegiance, which I grew up reciting, it ends with these words, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. But again, we are one nation to make a needed correction to the Pledge of Allegiance. We are one nation under God's judgment, not indivisible, we are very divided, with liberty and justice for some, not all, because we violently destroy the liberty and justice due to little babies in their mother's wombs every single day. Every single day is 9-11 for little human beings in their mother's wombs, for the image of God in the womb. Never forget that, folks. Never forget that every single day is 9-11 for your pre-born neighbors. Thousands of them. Every single day. And you see, during Juneteenth, people are celebrating their freedom of the slaves, the black people who were emancipated from slavery. But please know that only that true freedom is only to be found through Jesus Christ alone. Only through Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ sets the captives free. Know that today. Jesus Christ sets the captives free. And everybody is a slave, folks. You're either a slave to your sin, or you're a slave to Jesus Christ, a slave to righteousness. But only those who are slaves to Jesus Christ and righteousness, only those are truly free. Have you been born again, folks, by the blood of the Lamb? The Lord Jesus Christ said in John chapter 3, Unless one is born again, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. Have you been born again? That's the question. Today, folks, if you're still in rebellion to God, repent, turn from your sin. As the Bible says, as Jesus said in Matthew chapter 7, enter through the narrow gate, for the gate is wide and the way is broad that leads to destruction, and there are many who enter through it, for the gate is small and the way is narrow that leads to life, and there are few who find it. Today, folks, consider, are you on the broad way that leads to destruction? Or are you on the narrow path that leads to life? If you were to die today, would you go to heaven? Or would you go to hell? The Bible describes hell as a place where there is weeping and gnashing of teeth, where the worm does not die, where the fire is not quenched. And it brings to mind the rich man in the Gospel of Luke, I believe chapter 16. The rich man, he died and went to Hades. He said, I am in agony in this flame. And the rich man, he asked for a simple drop of water to cool off his tongue. For I am in agony in this flame. And the rich man could not even get one drop of water to cool off his tongue. That is sobering. That is frightening. That's scary. Just think about that, folks. Those who die in their sins and without, without repentance, that they'll spend eternity in the lake that burns with fire and brimstone. We enjoy cold water, ice cream, air conditioning on hot days, like today, like the other day it was in the 90s at least. People enjoy that, yes. Even the wicked enjoy that. But you see... Those who die in their sins, they will have no comforts in hell. There is no, there are no bottles of water in hell, not even a drop of water in hell to cool off your tongue, as the rich man experienced. There is no air conditioning in hell, no mercy in hell, no love in hell, no friendship. 
no common grace of God, no compassion, nothing, no pleasure, nothing. So is there, is there any warning regarding hell that's too severe? No. And the most loving thing for Christians to do for the wicked is to warn them in love. Speaking the truth in love, as the Bible says. You see, if we truly believe that hell exists and that people are in danger of going to hell, how can we not, how can we not but warn them to repent? As the Bible says, repent and be saved from this perverse generation. A generation that's so perverse that look at what we do to babies every day and almost nobody cares. In fact, years ago, I, I looked at how many professing Christians were in America. Tens of millions of professing Christians all throughout America. Tens of millions of professing Christians in one nation. Churches that dot the landscape. I often drive by multiple churches on the way to the, to the local child sacrifice center. And I look at all these professing Christians and I'm thinking, where are they? Where are they sharing the gospel? Where are they preaching the gospel? Where are they to go to Planned Parenthood, to the local child sacrifice center, and plead for the lives of their pre-born neighbors? Where are the Christians? Well, today there are Christians out here right now, yes. But I can tell you, most places in America, there might be one person, maybe one, that goes out. The rest of the people, well, they're dead in their sins and trespasses. And that's what the Bible says in Ephesians chapter 2, that they are dead in their sins and trespasses. They are children of wrath by nature. People think they're basically good. Yes, in America, most people think they're good if you ask them. You have a few humble people that realize that they deserve hell, that they're worthy of hell. But most people I talk to think they're good. And I point out to them, how in the world can we think that we're good when we do this to children every day, when we butcher our own babies to death and think nothing of it? As Brother Trevor says, babies are cute. Kiss them, don't kill them. Indeed. Especially with Father's Day this coming Sunday. Come on, Dad, what are you doing? There are dads today that are taking their girlfriends and their, and their wives to Planned Parenthood over here to have their babies murdered. They'd rather kill their children, not kiss them. There's a lot of fathers this coming Father's Day that they won't have any children to kiss because they, they, done, they done killed them. Grievous. Grievous. Think about that, fathers. You, you're not going to have any kids to, to hug on Father's Day. They're not going to be able to write you a, a letter or a Father's Day card because they done had them butchered. And you only have yourself to blame. Especially when there's Christians out here pleading with you to love your baby. So many child sacrifice centers, they have no Christians out to rescue those who are being taken away to death. To hold back those who are staggering to the slaughter. And that's an indictment against the local churches. In fact, every single child sacrifice center, every single Planned Parenthood is open by the permission of the churches. That's a fact. Every pride event, every pride pervert parade happens with the permission of the churches. Know that today, folks. The fact that we have a pride month, a pride goes before destruction month, is because it's the permission of the churches. Churches that are full of, they're not churches, they're actually cemeteries that are full of dead people who don't love their neighbor because they're dead. But to dismiss, to debunk the idea that people are basically good, that, that people think they're good, you go in the Bible to Romans chapter 3. The Bible says in Romans chapter 3, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. The Bible says that there is none righteous, no, not one. There is none who understands. There is none who seeks for God. All have turned aside. Together, they have become useless. There is no one who does good. There is not even one. Thumbs down to sin, yes. Thumbs down to a the fact that, a na that we have a nation that butchers babies and the professing Christians are totally at peace with it, totally at peace with it. 
peace, peace, but there is no peace. You say you're good now, people think they're good. Your so-called goodness won't get you to heaven. No, if you've ever told a lie, if you've ever stolen anything, if you've ever taken God's name in vain, ever dishonored your parents, ever put anything before God, ever, if you've ever coveted something that didn't belong to you, ever committed murder, if you hate your brother in your heart, you've already committed murder, Jesus said. And look at this country that butchers babies to death every single day. So many people would say, I haven't committed murder. Have you murdered a baby? They say, yes. Well, then you're a murderer. A baby murderer at that. In fact, what, what could be more of a heinous murder than a mother betraying her child to death? A mother, whether she takes her child to Planned Parenthood and, have her, and has her child butchered like this poor baby on the sign, or the mom takes the pills at the home, in her home, and she murders her baby and pushes her baby down the toilet. All the babies murdered through, it, through in vitro fertilization, IVF, and most professing Christians don't even know that. Most of them probably wouldn't care if they did know that. Many thousands of babies murdered every single day in this godless nation, murdered surgically, murdered chemically through the pills, murdered through in vitro fertilization, IVF. It just goes to show that there's something seriously, seriously wrong with the American form of Christianity. Just as William Wilberforce, the abolitionist of old, the British abolitionist, William Wilberforce, he concluded that the reason that the slave trade continues is because people aren't really Christians. They say they're Christians, but they're not Christians. Because true Christianity does not allow this to happen on the watch of the people. Just as the Bible says in Titus, they profess to know God, but by their deeds they deny Him. Being detestable and disobedient and worthless for any good deed. The Lord Jesus Christ said, These people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far away from me. But in vain do they worship me, teaching as doctrines the precepts of men. So many people that go to religious services on Sunday morning. They raise their blood so tans in the air to God when He cannot even hear their prayers or their songs. Go to hell. Bless you, sir. So you don't have to go to hell. Sorry, you had to hear that, Miss Olivia. You see, that's the thing today. The gospel is not God loves you or God loves everyone. No, that's a false gospel from the pit of hell that comforts the sinner in their sin. No, the gospel is repent or perish. The gospel is repent and be saved from this perverse generation. As the Lord Jesus Christ and John the Baptist proclaimed, both the Lord Jesus Christ and John the Baptist said, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. That's the gospel. What does it mean to repent? You have a change of mind about your behavior. You turn away from murdering your baby. You love your children. As Brother Trevor puts it, you, kill, you, you kiss your babies. You don't kill them because they're cute, because they're made in God's image. You realize what the Bible says, that the that their fruit of the womb is a reward. Blessed is the man whose quiver is full of them. Maybe that should be the, uh, the scripture for Father's Day right there, Psalm 127. Blessed is the man whose quiver is full of arrows of children. What about... What about the guy, the father, that, that done murdered all his babies, that butchered all his babies, paid his girlfriend or wife to murder all his, his children? Now he's not blessed because he's murdered them all, so I guess he's cursed. And that's what the Bible says. It says, Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord, and, and whose trust is the Lord. Cursed is the man who trusts in mankind, and who makes flesh his strength. You see, this, this nation is cursed because we're not trusting in the Lord. That should be very obvious. Why am I showing a murdered baby on this sign? Because this is our national sin. Again, as I said earlier, this is a public display of our nation's violent violation of God's law. 
the sixth commandment, you shall not murder. This is the indictment against this guilty nation, the evidence, the ultimate evidence that we have sinned against God. We're under his wrath and we must repent. As the Bible says, for the law is a tutor that leads you to Christ so that you may be justified by faith. Galatians 3.24 and Paul said in Romans chapter 7, verse 7, For I would not have come to know sin except through the law. So this right here, this is the evidence, the public evidence, that we have sinned against the Holy God. This, this will show you why you need a Savior, why we need a Savior in America. Because we're not good. We're not good people. We're wicked people who have butchered our babies for over 51 years who have displayed our sin like Sodom not even and not even concealed it in Isaiah chapter 3 verse 9 no we're not good people we are a guilty people with blood all over our hands and only the blood of Jesus Christ can wash away our sins people have shed the innocent blood of their children for over 51 years thousands of times every single day even professing Christians who didn't trust God who trusted the, the devil, the father of lies, who was a murderer from the beginning. People have shed the innocent blood of their own children. What they should have done is they should have, and they should now, repent and turn to the one who shed his, who shed his holy blood at the cross at Calvary. See, that's the difference there. Those who don't trust God, those who do not take refuge in the Lord, they shed the innocent blood of their children what they must do is repent and trust in the one who shed his innocent blood at the cross of Calvary. Innocent blood is being shed in America today because people refuse to trust in the Lord. They refuse to take refuge in the Lord. But for those same people, they can be forgiven. They can have their sins washed away by the blood of the Lamb, by trusting in the Lamb. The Lord Jesus Christ. Folks, don't don't shed the innocent blood of your baby because you don't want to be responsible because you're selfish. Come to the Lord Jesus Christ who shed his blood at the cross of Calvary. That his precious, holy shed blood will wash away your sins. As the old hymn goes, What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. And as the Lord Jesus Christ said, and to a nation full of professing Christians, most of whom do not know God, don't even read the Bible every day, the Lord Jesus Christ said, that if anyone wishes to come after me, <laughs> He must deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. For whoever wishes to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake, he is the one who will save it. Feel free to come have a conversation. All, all your middle fingers tell me is, is that you're not real smart. But feel free to park your car. There's parking places over here. And come have a conversation. I love talking to people. I talk to people all the time who disagree with me. And to finish what the Lord Jesus Christ said, the Lord Jesus Christ said, For whoever wishes to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake, he is the one who will save it. For what shall a profit a man if he gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Wow. For what shall a profit a man if he gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Some very sobering questions and words from the Lord Jesus Christ. And as the Lord Jesus Christ said in the, the book of James, you adulteresses, do you not know that friendship with the world is hostility toward God? Therefore, whoever wishes to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. 
makes one think of Billy Graham, who was a friend of the world and led millions of people to hell. Oh, folks, as you're driving through today, consider if you were to die today, would you go to heaven or would you go to hell? And how do you know? There's a heaven to be gained, there's a hell to be shunned. And again, the Bible says that hell is a place of weeping and gnashing of teeth, where the worm does not die, where the fire is not quenched. We speak with much urgency today, knowing about 150,000 people die every day all over the world. We don't want anyone to die and go to hell. I was, just read, I was just reading about the rich man in Hades who was in agony in the flame. And he said, he asked Father Abraham to send Lazarus, the poor man, to come dip his finger in water and cool off his tongue. He said, for I am in agony in this flame. But the rich man could not even get a drop of water to cool off his tongue in Hades, in hell. Oh, do not become like the rich man who's in agony in the flame. Do not become like all those people who died in their sins and went to hell. They gained the whole world, but they lost, they forfeited their own soul. For the passing pleasures of sin, do not let your sins take you to hell. It's not worth it. This life is so short and temporal. Eternity is so long. Only a fool would trust in the passing pleasures of sin in exchange for eternity, for his eternal soul. Know today, folks, that Jesus Christ is king. Abortion is murder, and everybody knows it. Homosexuality is an abomination because the Bible says so. Leviticus 18, verse 22. <coughs> oh, the Bible says, folks, the Bible says, for the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. The bad news first, for the wages of sin is death, followed by the good news, but the free gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. And as the Bible says, and this applies to everybody, whether you're a professing atheist, a Buddhist, a Mormon, Jehovah's Witness, professing Christian, Catholic, whatever you are, whatever you profess, agnostic, the Bible says every knee will bow, every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. And again, folks, for those who do not understand why I am flying the, the American flag upside down, is because if you look it up what that means, which I have done, it, it simply means that America is under duress, America is in distress, it's in great trouble, which is very true. No, we're not in trouble from foreign enemies destroying us. We're doing a mighty fine job of destroying ourselves because of our rebellion against God. No, we're in great danger because we have sinned against God. We have violated God's holy law. As you can see on this sign, that we butcher As you can see on this sign that we butcher babies to death every day and almost nobody cares. How can we think for one moment that we can slaughter children thousands of times every single day and not be in trouble with the holy God? Everything's hunky dory, everything's fine. Oh no. Can we do we really think for one moment that we can display our sin like Sodom? that we can parade what the Bible calls an abomination in the streets for well over 50 years and God's not angry with us? Again, the Bible says that God is angry with the wicked every day. Psalm 711. The next time you drive by a 711 convenience store, remember Psalm 711 that says that God is angry with the wicked every day. 
No God doesn't love you if you're in rebellion. No God doesn't love you as you're having your baby's head cut off at Planned Parenthood or taking the pill to slaughter your child. No, actually the Bible says that the man of bloodshed and deceit, God hates. The man who loves, the one who loves violence, his soul abhors. In Psalm 5 and Psalm 11, read it. It doesn't say God loves you. No, it actually says God hates you. The one who loves violence, the man of bloodshed and deceit, God hates, God abhors. Quite a different message from the God loves you false gospel that has deceived millions upon millions of people and led them straight to hell. Again, thank you, Billy Graham. Thank you, Frank Franklin Graham, for preaching a false gospel and leading millions to hell. Thank you. Oh, folks, that we would repent and turn to the living God as the Thessalonians did in 1 Thessalonians chapter 1. That we would turn from our idols to the living God. And yes, America is filled with idols. The flag is an idol to so many people. The flag is an idol. We sing our songs. God bless America or America the beautiful. We sing our songs. Well, America is not beautiful because America is, ab is abominable because we butcher our babies to death every day and the vast, vast majority of professing Christians couldn't possibly care less. I'm sure I'll be hearing that in the coming days, people singing America the Beautiful. I'll just tell them, no, 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 sing America the Abominable. Singing God Bless America. Let me, let me change the, the lyric in there, or add to it actually. Lee, Lee Greenwood, he sings, and I'm proud to be an American, or at least I know I'm free. Let me add to that. Well, at least I know I'm free to butcher my baby and celebrate sodomy. There we go. That's much better. And I'm, and I'm proud to be an American, or at least I know I'm free to butcher my baby and celebrate sodomy. And I won't forget the men who died who gave their right to me, but I'll forget the babies who were butchered so I could have such freedom. So I can live for myself and be selfish and be irresponsible. So hopefully that'll be playing in your head now. The uh, Godless America. That, shame, that, that song should not be called God Bless America by Lee Greenwood. It should be called Godless America because we are a Godless country. How can we? How can we ask? How can we say God Bless America and then turn around and butcher His blessings to death? And the vast majority of professing Christians are totally fine with it. Totally fine with it. Oh, folks, it's, it's a call to repentance. Repent or perish. Because the Bible says that you are just a vapor that appears for a little while and then vanishes away. This life is so short. The Bible talks about the brevity of life. And people are dying every day, old, middle-aged, young, and in between. And so many people coming up this weekend, they're going to be people that, are, that will be dying through drug overdoses, drinking themselves to death, ODing on drugs. There'll be people that will be shot to death, stabbed to death, on and on. And most of them, most of them are not ready to meet their maker. There'll be people killing themselves in America today, tomorrow, every day. Just earlier, I was talking to, to a brother about people who jump off the Golden Gate Bridge in San Francisco and kill themselves. So many people were doing that that they built a, a net under the bridge to try and so people would not kill themselves. They'd be less tempted to. And why are people killing themselves in America? They, we have an epidemic of suicide. Well, what do you think is going to happen when you tell people that there is no God, you tell them that human life has no value, and that just live for yourself? When Jesus said, deny yourself, and take up your cross daily and follow me. We are living totally contrary to how God told us to live. No wonder we're miserable in America. No wonder we're not happy. No wonder there's no peace. Even though there's a fake superficial peace, but it's superficial. That's why people are killing themselves in America, all throughout America. is because they have turned from the one true God, the Lord Jesus Christ, and turned to a bunch of idols that will not satisfy cannot satisfy. Again, the Bible says that there is no peace for the wicked. No peace for the wicked. 
The Bible says that the sorrows of those who hasten to another God will be multiplied. The Bible says that the sorrows of the wicked are many, are many. So the Bible says right there why we're so unhappy, why, we're, why people are killing themselves, because they have multiplied their sorrows upon sorrows, because they have turned from the Lord Jesus Christ and turned to any false god that's okay with their sin. Why do you have so many professing Christians in this godless nation, this baby murdering nation, that think it's okay to be a homosexual? They think it's okay to murder their baby. They think it's okay to, to get drunk. They think it's okay to use foul language in front of children even. Why do you have that? Well, it's, it's because they think God loves them no matter what they do. They can live like a devil and God loves them because Billy Graham told them so. No. Stop listening to Billy Graham. Open your Bible. Read what the Bible says. Read what the Bible says, folks. That's why America is, is in the toilet. That's why people don't even know what gender they are anymore. That's why people identify as they or them. That's why we have a country where men think they can, be, they can become pregnant, which is insanity. Insanity. Because as the Bible says, the one who despises the word brings destruction on himself. And as God says in the proverb, God says, all those who hate me love death. You see, we, in America, we hate God, and because we hate God, we love death. That's why we slaughter thousands of babies every day. That's why people shoot themselves in schools and in other places all over America. That's why there's so many stabbings. In fact, I think people have done studies showing that violence outside the womb has dramatically increased ever since this nation declared open war, open season, on the most helpless of human beings in their mother's wombs over 51 years ago. Why do school shootings happen? Well, because the Bible is true. Whatever a man sows, this shall he also reap. What did you think was going to happen? They, they asked after the, the Columbine massacre, why is this happening? Well, what did you think was going to happen when you took the Bible out of the public school system and you banned prayer from the public school system? I know because I grew up in the public school system, never saw a Bible that I can recall, never heard anyone pray. Today, if you dare to pray in Jesus' name in a public school, you'll have the ACLU and the atheists all over you with a lawsuit. If you dare to open a Bible in the public school, you'll probably be slapped with a lawsuit. You'll probably have the Satanists and atheists all over your school, demanding that your Bible be thrown in the trash can. Again, that's what America does to the Bible. That's what America does to the Gospel. America throws the Gospel in the garbage. Just recently, at a festival there in Grants Pass, a Satanist took, to, I offered him a gospel track. The Satanist, he was a young guy, the Satanist took the gospel track, tore it into pieces, spit on it several times, and asked for a lighter to light the gospel track on fire. And then he proceeded to spit on the ground in front of me several times. That's what America does to the gospel. America tears the gospel to pieces, spits on it, and tries to light it on fire. When you have people all around the world who don't even have a Bible, Christians who walk for miles, even days, to even listen to a Bible, they don't have a Bible. And America has Bibles everywhere, and yet you have Marilyn Manson in concert tearing up the Bible. And yet Satan is tearing up the Bible. And again, as Jesus said, to whom much has been given, much will be required. Oh, that we would repent. Sodom had no Bible. America has an embarrassment of riches, an embarrassment of Bibles. We have Bibles up to our eyeballs. And we are such a hardened, stiff-necked, stubborn people who refuse to listen to the words of the prophets that we, would, that we would repent, folks, that we would repent. Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Stop murdering your children. Humble yourself. Turn to the Lord Jesus Christ alone for salvation.
is in great distress, folks. That's why the flag is being flown upside down, because America is in great danger. This is a warning to this baby murdering sodomite blood soaked land that we have violated God's law and that we must repent or perish. It's a call to repentance, folks. We're not good people. This is not a good nation. I am so thankful for their freedom to preach the gospel in this nation. But this is not a good nation. It's a wicked nation. I'm, I'm actually even surprised that we have the freedom to do this, as wicked as we are. I praise God for that. I'm thankful for those who died for the freedom to do this. But more, much, much more importantly, I am thankful for my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who sacrificed himself on the cross to save wicked sinners like I was. No longer a sinner, but now a saint. You see, while we're thanking, while we're expressing appreciation for those who died for our freedom to do this, watch your language, man, there's ladies around. While we, are, while we express appreciation for those who died, who shed their blood for our freedom, our freedoms in this nation, even while we, we destroy the freedoms of little babies, Let us remember the ultimate sacrifice in history, the sacrifice of the Lord Jesus Christ, who shed his blood at the cross of Calvary. The greatest sacrifice in history was the sacrifice of Jesus Christ to set the captives free, to set sinners free. Where you stand before the one who committed, who gave up his own life, where do you stand before the one who gave the greatest sacrifice of all? That's the question today. It's true. Careful, man. There are ladies around here. Please be careful not to offend any, any ladies around here. See this over here? This woman. Please don't be cursing, man. There's ladies around here. We are seeing the Bible come alive out here. Well, my hair still works. Yes, we are seeing the Bible come alive out here today that people are not good, that people are basically wicked. All you have to do, if, if you want to see the nature of man, just take a Bible, just take a Bible to the public street corner, preach the gospel, and show the bloody city her abominations. If you want to see that people are not basically good, that they're, they're basically wicked, just do what we're doing. Take the gospel to the streets, show the bloody city her abominations, and you'll see just how wicked people are, as we've seen today. As the Lord Jesus Christ described the human heart, Jeremiah 17:9, the heart is deceitful and desperately sick. Who can know it? Who can know it? The Gospel of Mark chapter 7, the Lord Jesus Christ said, For from within, out of the heart of man, Proceed the evil thoughts, thefts, fornications, murders, adulteries, deeds of coveting and wickedness, as well as deceit, 
sensuality, envy, slander, pride, and foolishness. All these evil things proceed from within and defile the man. That's what's in the heart of man. Only evil. Only evil. No people are not good. They're, they're not basically good. They're basically wicked. Again, how can we possibly think that we're good when we are busy butchering little babies to death every single day? I think ISIS and Hamas got their ideas of butchery from America because America seems to be a good teachers of how to be wicked and, and how to butcher helpless human beings. I think Hitler and the Nazis got their ideas of butchering millions of people from Americans. We teach the world how to be wicked. We teach the world how to murder people. Watch the language, sir. There's men around here. There's children around here. Oh, yes, we are seeing the Bible come alive. People showing us their IQs with their fingers. We are seeing the Bible come alive out here today. That people are wicked. That people are evil. We are seeing little boys who've never grown up and they want to show us their IQs with a finger. But if people actually are open to dialogue, they actually appreciate that there are Christians exercising their freedom of speech, feel free to park your car and come talk to us. After all, we are a nation that has freedom of speech, are we not? We are a nation that celebrates freedom. Unfortunately, one of the freedoms that we celebrate is the freedom to murder babies. So, little babies in the womb, they're not truly free as we butcher them, as we rip their heads off. So we must speak up for them because you celebrate your freedom, but then we destroy the freedom of little babies in the womb. Ma'am, careful, there's ladies around here. We are seeing on display out here many women who aren't, who I guess they never learned how to be a lady. Many women out here that I guess their fathers failed to raise them right because they, have ne they were never taught how to be a lady. There's flesh. Ladies do not raise the middle finger and ladies do not curse out preachers. But we have a nation where the men are lacking and ladies are lacking. We have a nation of little boys who've never grown up. All they want to do is play video games, play Grand Theft Auto, and murder people for profit. And then we have people who murder people in real life for profit by taking their babies to Planned Parenthood and having those babies butchered. Is that why is that why people butcher their babies today in America because they learn how to do it through Grand Theft Auto? No, they've been butchering their babies for over 51 years with the permission of the churches, with the silence and apathy of the pulpits. Oh, it's just what the Bible says. The Bible says that in in the last days, difficult times will come for men will be lovers of self, lovers of money, boastful, arrogant, revilers, disobedient to parents, ungrateful, unholy, unloving, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. They will be haters of good. We've seen that today. Haters of good, no self-control, brutal. We are brutal as we butcher our babies to death every day.